Yo guys, welcome to my Blade Vortex Arc Mage build guide for Heist League. In this video, I'm going to be going over my character that can do all bosses and show you guys how to build them. I'll leave timestamps in the description below so you guys can skip to different parts of the video. At the end of the video, I'll show you guys the Uber Elder Kill and Uber at Ziri, the ones that I did from Harvest League. Just note that they will be my first ever boss kills with that character. And the gear on this character is much better than the gear that I had on the Harvest League character. So this character is a pretty tanky character. I have a really high effective HP pool when it comes with mind over matter. I have max dodge and close to max spell dodge with this character. This character can clear all boss content in the game and this character is probably one of the best delving characters that I've ever made. In Harvest League I got him like to 800 or so but this week I haven't bothered doing it. Note this isn't one of those crazy characters that do 50 million DPS. This character gets around 4 to 5 million Shaper DPS. This character is built with defense in mind so I sacrificed a little bit of offense for defense. The only downside to this character is he is an evasion build so you have to be careful with how many damage mods that you roll on maps. You're not going to get hit very often but when you do you're probably going to get chunked kind of hard so you want to make sure that you have enough effective HP to absorb a hit. If you're roll too much damage mods on a map the potential of getting one shot is pretty good so you still got to be smart and roll on your map. Another downside of the character is, is it can be a little bit rough to level until around level 75 or so. It definitely gets a little bit smoother though once you get the unleash support gem in act 4. This character relies on a lot of uniques as well so it's not really viable for solo self found. This character though is great for running lab, great for cranking out maps, great for heist. It's perfect for all that type of stuff. All right let's move on to how we stack defenses with this character. Yo guys, in this part of the video I'm going to show you guys how I layer my defenses and make this guy as tanky as possible. Alright, so the first way that I make my guy tanky as possible is we make use of Mind Over Matter. We acquire Mind Over Matter through the unique chest Cloak of Defiance. One good thing about Cloak of Defiance is it gives an extra 10% damage taken from mana before life. So stacking that on top of Mind Over Matter, we're now up to 40% damage taken from mana before life. And the last thing about Mind Over Matter is we take the Hierophant node that has an extra 8% damage taken from mana before life. For the next part of the defensive stacking we take the node to Agnostic. What this node will do is sacrifice 20% of your mana per second to fill up your HP if it's not full. So at 10,000 mana this will heal you 2,000 HP a second. With a 4k HP pool in 2 seconds your HP will be fully regen. So for the next part of our defensive stacking is our dodge and spell dodge. We have 72% dodge and 62% spell dodge. The next part of defensive stacking is taste to hate. What this flask does is it converts 20% of physical damage taken as cold damage. And with this you can use your resist to mitigate that cold damage you take. The next part of our defensive stacking comes from Ace Nast Gentle Touch, our unique gloves. These gloves are great for the build but they're very expensive. So the first thing you'll notice on these gloves is that they'll give you temp chains on hit. This will allow you to avoid enemies attacks easier. The second thing with the temp chains thing is enemies that are cursed with temp chains, all nearby enemies are blinded, so they have 50% less chance to hit. Also, when the enemy dies, the curse stays on the monster for 10 seconds, keeping everything blinded. And lastly, it explodes corpses. This will prevent any on-death effects, and this will also prevent the monsters from being detonate deaded. Our next layer of defensive stacking is Arcane Cloak. What Arcane Cloak does is it sacrifices so much of your mana for a shield. I usually get about 6 to 8k shield with this. The next layer of defensive stacking is Sigil of Power. What this does in its final tier is enemies deal 19% less damage. For the gear portion of the video, here's a list of the mandatory uniques that you'll need. For the helmet slot, we use Crown of the Inward Eye. This helmet gives you lots of life and mana. This helmet also gives you Transfiguration of Mind. This takes a percentage of our mana that we get on the tree in gear and gives us a little bit more damage. And the best enchant is Crypt Multi with Blade Vortex. For the second unique we use that series Forable. This amulet gives us a ton of flat mana and a lot of mana regen. Be sure to quality it to 20% with Fertile Catalyst. And for the anointment on the amulet, we anoint Arcane Capacitor. For a glove we use Ace Nash Gentle Touch. These gloves give us lots of life and mana. Give us Temp Chains on hit. These gloves also blind nearby enemies that are cursed. And these gloves go boom boom, they blow up corpses. For our boots we use Omeokan. These boots provide us with a lot of mana. Give us tons of movement speed, give us onslaught, give us 20% dodge and spell dodge. And with these boots just make sure they're item level 75 so you can get the mana regen enchant. For our chest we use Cloak of Defiance. Cloak of Defiance gives us a ton of flat mana and mana regen. And Cloak of Defiance gives us mine over mana with an extra 10%. For your rings and your belt, you want to focus on mana, life, and resist. For our flasks, we use a Taste of Hate. Taste of Hate gives us a little bit of damage and some defense versus physical attacks. We have a Quartz Flask for more dodge and spell dodge. It also gives us phasing that allows us to run through enemies. We also use a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. 
This just helps with map clear. For bosses, you can use a Cinder Swallow Flask. Just make sure you have some fire damage to spells to make use of it. Next, we have a Diamond Flask for more crit chance. Lastly, we have an Enduring Mana Flask. Make sure you get all of the flasks up to 26%. You can do that by having a level 3 Hillock and Research. And make sure your flasks have Bleed, Curse, and Freeze Removal. This is really simple just by using Einhar to craft it. For your weapons, you want to use a good set of rares. For the order of stuff that you want on your weapons, you want to go mana, crit, spell damage, flat spell damage, and cast speed. And you want to make sure that one of the weapons that you have, you can craft a suffix on it. You want to craft trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill. For jewels, you just want mana, damage, and crit multi. For watcher's eye, you just want increased mana recovery when affected by clarity. So for my spell links, we're going to go with weapon one and make sure this is the one with the crafted mod on it. For this one, you want sigil of power, increase AoE, and wave of conviction. For your second weapon, you want divergent precision, portal, and clarity. For your helmet, you want calling strike, cast when damage taken, storm brand, and power charge on crit. Make sure cast when damage taken and storm brand are level one. For the gems in your gloves, we have anomalous second wind. We have divergent vitality. Just make sure you keep that at level one. It gives us increased damage on full life. We have dash and conch effect. I just have conch effect in there for swapping. Just make sure that vitality isn't linked with anything. For your boots, I have increased duration, arcane cloak, and arcane surge. I also have an anomalous blade vortex. I use this for bossing for the life leech. And then for the six link chest, we use unleash. Get awakened unleash if you can. The quality gets 20% spell damage instead of 10%. We use regular Val Blade Vortex. It gives us lots of AoE for map clear. We use Awaken Lightning Penetration. You can use the regular one until you get the Awaken version. The quality on this gives 20% increased spell damage instead of 10, and you get a little bit more Lightning Penetration. For our fourth link, we use Arc Mage. For the fifth link, we use Increased Critical Damage. And then for the sixth link, we use either Conk Effect or Increased AoE. Now there's a few extra gems that you can use if you want, but it will sacrifice defense for damage. You can run Righteous Fire with this build, no problem. And then you can do Summon Ice Golem as well to give you a little bit more crit. And that's it for the gear portion. When it comes to the skill tree, this is kind of like how I did it. I'll put a path to building link below with uh, points to spend for every 20 levels or so. You don't have to follow it exact. Like You can get Agnostic whenever you feel like you have enough mana and health. I got it, I think, in Act 4. But I kind of just feel it out, put a point into it, and eh, it's not feeling that good. I'll get it a little later. Uh, before you get Cloak of Defiance, make sure you grab Mind Over Matter for a little bit, as it'll help out with your leveling experience. I kind of fill up this part of the tree, and usually most of it's filled up before you get to Merciless Lab, where you can come out of the, uh, the Ranger tree. But if you fill it up and still have points, I just hoard my points until I do Merciless Lab, and then I just rush for uh, Phase Acro kind of like my goal once you get phase acro then your character will feel a lot more tankier as well other than that it's pretty straightforward we anoint arcane capacitor for more mana better damage with arcane surge and that's pretty much it for the tree portion of the video when it comes to our ascendancy the way i go is i hit over towards ranger tree so for the first couple points you're just going to get your passive point and dex then i grab the pathfinder because we get lots of juicy flask stuff and you don't have to worry about running out of flask and then for merciless lab we do path of the ranger and then do strength and intelligence and then for our uber lab we want to hit the hierophant when it comes to our pathion i grab soul of solaris and get everything unlocked you don't have to worry about the bottom one but the take no damage from critical strikes if you've been taking a crit recently is very good it just prevents you from getting like really shotgunned then it takes soul of shikari for just less chaos damage and the poisons do less damage as well. That's about all she wrote for my build guide. I'll leave you with some boss kills at the end that I did during Harvest League and they were my first ever kills on them. Thanks for watching and have a great day. so much damage she didn't even actually kill me with the spear thing the first time all right phase thingy where's the spear
Okay, that was a lot better. I'm kind of impressed with myself with that one. Oops, I went right into that. Oh god. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're doing good. I'm probably gonna die yet. Yeah. I was expecting that when I was out of flasks. I'm pretty confident I'm gonna kill her this time for the first time. Yay. Okay, give this a second. So I don't get any invisible hits here. Okay. I can't remember if there's one more split phase or not. We got this. We're figuring this out. Where's the spear? Right there. Whoops, I ran I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at my flask and I ran into the reflect. Good job. Pro game strats right there. God, those spears hurt. Woo! I did it. I did it. Yay! Finally, after all these years, I killed her. We got time anyway. All right, let's do it. So we got to kill a shaper first, from what I understand. Oh, I thought we went. Waiting for my flask to recharge, hopefully. There we go. Oh, I'm dead. Uh, I thought that got me. Right, I'm just gonna. Let my flask recharge here real fast. Oh, we got add phase now. Perfect. So far, so good. Let's go over here while he's beaming. Uh, actually, I'm supposed to put those in a different spot. Hopefully, that would be okay. So now I gotta fight Shaper. Now he's got Slam, I think. There, so that doesn't kill me. 
gonna kill this guy. Oh, I went right to the balls there. Where is he? So far, so good. Oh, now I was tunnel visioning on the ball there. All right, one death. That's not bad. I did not want to put that ball there, I don't think. Just more worried about my flask recharging right now. Okay, we got that. Let's kill this guy. Put that. Okay, he's immune now. Slam. Not here. And then adds again. Shaper dead. Yay, I did it. That could have been deathless easy. Woohoo! That was my first ever attempt solo. Ah, oh, no jewel. I got the steel ring now. So there we go. That was awesome. I got to do at Ziri next and then we're good. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll uh, try to keep these videos a coming.